I just want to be self-reflexive for our audience. Caitlin and I have been very good friends since 2014. We met in Sochi Olympic Games and uh, I have been a part of this process. So Caitlin, thank you so much for joining me. How long have you been thinking about this day? Oh, shorter than you might think, to be honest, because I wasn't sure if I'd make it here. Um, you know, accepting, identifying and accepting myself as a queer woman um, is, has been a long journey um, that I've known for a long time, but was not ready to really step into my identity. And, um, you know, over the last couple of years, especially after stepping away from sport, I decided to start taking baby steps. And um, so I just feel very proud that I made it to this day. Um, and, uh, you know, I feel like it's important for me now um, to, to step up for myself and for my sport and um, honored to be here. Why now? Ooh, um, I feel like there's a lot of different reasons why now is the right time. Um, I think 2020 taught us all a lot about ourselves um, and about the world. And, um, you know, when everything stopped, I had nothing else to do but look in the mirror. And this is something that I've been running from for a very long time. And, uh, you know, I think there was something in me, in my knowing that said, okay, you have no other choice but to start the work. And um, so that with a lot of the global events made me feel like, hey, I need to be myself. You know, I need to utilize all of who I am um, to stand up for what's right too. Um, time is of the essence. We're losing, we're losing people. My stepmother passed, um, you know, it's life is short. Life is too short to not be all of who you are. So I um, started the process seriously, <laughs> trying to take really consistent steps moving forward. And um, along with the help of some incredible people, um, I've been able to really believe that, um, you know, I deserve to be here and um, that I that I deserve to be all of who I am. And, um, you know, it's a process that is ongoing. But um, now is the time, you know, life is too short. Was there a, an exact moment that made the decision easier for you? Um, I, I don't know. I think it's a series of a lot of little mm -hmm. things, you know, um, being away from competitive sport made a big difference. And um, seeing who else I was besides Caitlin Weaver of Weaver Poget, Canadian ice dancer. And, um, you know, I've so often defaulted to that identity um, that I didn't, I didn't want to look and I didn't have time to look at any other part of who I was. And, um, and that was, and I was okay with it. You know, it made me a really fierce athlete, but then stepping away, it was like, okay, now, now I have some work to do. And, um, I think that coupled with, um, you know, going through the last year and, um, and just setting the intention, I think in 2021 to say, Caitlin, now's your time, you know? Um, and then those little things step-by-step step kind of brought me here. First Olympic female figure skater that's ever publicly come out. What do you feel when you hear that? Uh, it's absolutely surreal. My mind just went like, wait a second, wait, 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 really? Like, um, it, 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 it's, a, it's surreal to think that it's me. Um, and it makes me, it makes my heart heavy to feel like it's taken this long. Um, I, I think that says a lot about our sport, um, that, you know, surely there, there are other women in the LGBTQ plus community that have passed through Olympic figure skating, but didn't feel safe to, um, be all of who they are. And so, I, I was able to kind of understand, hey, you know what, Caitlin, if this is you, it's got to be you. Like, yeah. come on, like, let's step up yeah. for you and others. And uh, it's, 
I think we've got a lot of work to do for our sport and um, you know, here we are, let's do it. I'm here, I'm ready, let's start. When did you first know or first start to think I might be queer? I didn't know until a little bit later. Um, I was probably 21 when I started to feel emotions that I didn't quite understand, um, which also made it confusing because stories that I had read or, you know, people that I've known later on in life kind of like, tell a story about knowing early. And so that and, and a few other reasons of like, you know, not having skaters and not having queer women in skating, um, you know, feeling like it was wrong. I, I was not ready to think that this was a valid part of myself. Um, but like any queer person knows, you know, it doesn't go away. And um, so over the years, and as I started to grow, grow up a little bit and understand like, wait a second, this is, this is real. And you know, this is not some part of me that I have to hate. Um, that's when I started to, to secretly say, okay, is this who I am? you know, and, and be okay with it. In my journey, I mean, I, I recognized it, but there was a long time before I accepted it. What did that journey look like for you? That journey is still going on. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been slow going for me. And um, I have to know that that's okay. <laughs> Everyone's journey is different. <laughs> um, but it, it's been a it's been a long road, and um, and I still have a lot of work to do. But I feel like I'm at a place now where I can stand on my own two feet, and take pride and confidence in my story, and know that it's valid and real, and that maybe just maybe there's someone else that has felt like how I felt growing up. Yeah, it's it's not easy, you know. It's not easy, um, and I think that being in a sport too that is so um, hyper feminine for women and puts a lot of pressure on on women to play a role that's my comfort zone you know and i understand that i could be that and more you know i didn't understand in our little world that i could you know be a pretty princess who also likes women you know and and that's something i think like stereotypes in our in our society that aren't right. Um, and that's what I want to change too, you know, but it took kind of meeting new people, um, opening myself up to a beautiful community, a uh, beautiful, supportive LGBTQ plus community to say, Hey, you, you can be that and more, you can be anything that you want to be. Um, and be queer is something to be really proud of. So, um, yeah, still on the road, but but definitely proud to be here. Thank you for being here. You said it. I mean, figure skating has certain pressures. You have to be hyper feminine. It's hyper heteronormative. How did you maneuver uh, your queerness with your competitive skating career? It, it was so deep, <laughs> Seja, you know, so deep and so buried. Um, for a long time, and um, and it was something that was my deep dark dark secret. And just even that phrase shows you how I felt about it. You know, um, it was it was my most vulnerable piece of myself. Um, and you know, we live our lives out loud in ice dance. You know, we um, we have to be out for in the audience and be, you know, the most genuine performances usually are the ones that are the best. And so I had to really bury that very deep. And I just want to say though, that um, even being a queer person, relationships and sexuality and, um, you know, people are complex and layered and beautiful and um, navigating that as well in, as an ice dance couple was something that was very difficult for me because I love and always will love my partner, Andrew, so deeply. Um, and so it was, it was hard to kind of accept both of these things as true. And so um, I did it, you know, I just kept my eyes on the 
eyes and and just um, kept focused on on doing what's best for the team and what's best for our success. And um, in my mind, being queer did not belong in the formula. Um, so I just didn't, you know, and that's a privilege that not many people have, you know, I, I feel like I, I tried to shut it off, but it, it doesn't really work like that. <laughs> so, um, you know, it took a long time to let it kind of come up and, and become really a part of who I am. How much pressure did you put on yourself to keep that hidden? All of the, it. The, the waterworks <laughs> are already going, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, um, all of it. I, you know, when it when it felt like just a mistake, it was something that I could like shame myself into knowing, you know, that was a mistake. That's not who I am. But as time went on, you know, and I started to accept that this is part of my identity, I really judged myself so much um, over what type of clothes I wear, what if whether I wear makeup or not, how I present, um, how I move, how I um, speak, how I, cause I, every, every, you know, in my brain, it was like, is this gonna look gay? Is this gonna look straight? Is this gonna, is this gonna pass? Is this gonna not pass? Are people gonna be suspicious? What if I am too close to this person? What if I'm not close enough to this person? You know, and, and that type of, um, analyzing is really hard on somebody especially you know a teenager early 20s like growing up it was you know it was tough a lot of pressure um but my comfort zone was always nestled with my partner andrew and doing what we love to do so um that was always where i where i found myself going back to and not really taking steps moving forward in my personal life we're going to get to Andrew, but let's dive into Ice Dance. I mean, it is so theatrical. There, there has to be a, a connection between ice dancers, ice partners. What about that environment made you feel like you had to hide parts of yourself? I never felt like I have, I never feel like I have to act when I'm on the ice with Andrew. Um, we have a really beautiful, natural connection. Um, and that's one of our trademarks, you know? Um, and it's important to me to know that none of that was ever fake, you know? Mm -hmm. um, which I, I really wanna stress that it's, you know, we don't need to think on the binary. It's not in or out, yes or no. It's layered and complex and beautiful and people in our lives, um, you know, are layered and complex and beautiful. And so, um, you know, my partnership with Andrew has never been, have, has never been anything but real and authentic. Um, it was more the fact that I felt like that was the only way to be uh, as Caitlin, you know, that that was the most valuable person that I could be. Mm -hmm if I varied from that, um, I wouldn't be as successful. You know, I wouldn't be as valued. We, I stance as beautiful as it is, as a judge sport. We're judged every single day of our lives. Um, and, um, I think it says something about figure skating that, that people, um, on, in any LGBTQ plus or any type of minority, invisible minority in particular, um, don't feel safe to be who they are necessarily because they're afraid of being judged. And, um, you know, <laughs> being queer is still illegal in some parts of the world. And so who's to say that there's a judge on your panel that might not support that. And, um, you know, it's, it's tough when your livelihood depends on that being accepted. And especially when you're successful at it, you know, um, I was good at playing that role. And so being anybody else besides her didn't feel worthy. What do you think could have been different with your figure skating career if being queer wasn't so taboo in figure skating? I think that we would have a really beautiful variety of diverse people in our sport. Um, our sport, it's my belief that art is the underlying um, 
you know, it's the basis of figure skating. Yes, it's a sport, but it's an art. And what brings artists, you know, it's expression, it's freedom, it's movement, it's creativity. And I think if figure skating was more inclusive, um, we would we would see a lot of varied and beautiful and diverse art. Um, I don't know how that's gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know, um, especially in, in couples, you know, how that's going to happen. Um, but I think just even accepting that we're here, that queer women exist, um, is part of the process moving forward. Um, you know, when people think of figure skating, they think it's gay. And what do you think of gay? You think of gay men, you know, women aren't even on the, uh, on the radar mm -hmm. and they're there. We're here, you know? Um, and I think that just even having that idea of inclusivity is a way that we can start to really open this up because it's too beautiful of an experience and of a sport to be so narrow. When you were in the closet competing, how do you think that that affected your mental health? Oh, it weighed a lot, you know, um, Anybody who's had to hide something, whatever that is, knows that it's an absolute stressor. And unfortunately for me, it just was permanent, you know. But when I was performing, you know, um, I just, that was the thing that always took front, front seat, you know. So um, I'm really, 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 really good at not paying attention to that other side of myself, you know, not anymore. <laughs> but um, back then I was. And and I, and I think I've had to kind of pay the price for that when I came out of competition to really go through what we, you know, what we have figure skaters have experienced. It's a lot and it is beautiful and it's a gift and it's a privilege to be an Olympic ice dancer representing Canada. And I will never go against that. Yeah. Um, but it, it's not for free, you know, and um, anybody that comes out of sport knows it's, it's a big it's a big shift and it's a big thing that you really to take your time in processing. And so that on top of understanding who I am and being able to accept all of who I am was an extra layer of stuff I had to deal with and go through and process and accept and I'm still doing that work, but absolutely, you know, mental health needs to be number one. And um, I didn't really make that so much of a priority. Do you think your mental health has shifted after accepting and moving forward, coming out now? Undoubtedly, my mental health has improved. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, but first, there's the there was the denial that I didn't, you know, that I had an issue. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always the eternal optimist. A lot of people that know me, you know, I always find the bright side. Um, and there's good and bad to that. You have to also see both sides of the coin. Yeah. Um, you know, being able to take care of your mental health, have a community that supports you, um, work with a professional, you know, good or bad, everybody should have someone that they can talk to and feel safe. That make that, you know, makes such a huge difference. And sometimes for most, and for me, just even taking that step to say, okay, I'm going to talk to someone about this. That's the, one of the biggest first steps. And so, you know, if you're thinking about it, if, if you're listening and you're in trouble and you're thinking about it, make the first step, I promise you, you won't uh, regret it. Preach. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> Can we talk about Andrew? Uh, always. <laughs> Andrew Poge, uh, best friend, partner in crime, of course, on the ice. Yeah. How did he help you? maneuver you know your struggles to find your identity andrew um he's a pillar in my life um whew, always has been and um i think coming out to him was the hardest um and he was just right there strong and steady like always and so his support through this means the world to me. And I know that in him, I have a partner and best friend for life and I love him so dearly. And so I just feel so grateful to have had him as a professional, you know, figure skater, but uh, as a person, he, 
everybody should have an Andrew in their life, you know? And so just being able to accept me for who I am um, and move forward and still do what we love to do just means the world to me. How has he helped you? Uh, he just says, <laughs> he allows me to see um, what he sees in me. Um, he's, you know, he says, uh, I remember when actually in the message that he wrote to me, he said, um, I want you to see the magic in you, <laughs> you know, the beauty in you. So um, he just reminds me that I deserve to be making these steps. Ah! <laughs> um, but uh, he's he's just there, you know, just having some, just having a hand to hold, just like your go-to, your home base. Um, that's him for me. I reached out to Andrew, and uh, I'm gonna read a little statement that he would like you to know. Thank you, Caitlin, for being brave enough to share this vulnerable moment with the grander audience. We have always leaned on one another throughout our partnership because each see each other at our core. I am proud of your strength and vulnerability to share your story as you become the best version of Caitlin Weaver. I will be here and support you however I can because you share an important message. As humans, we need to lean more into who we truly are. I cannot wait to continue our journey as partners as you step into this new chapter of your life. Our partnership has been filled with its ups and downs that have created many, many proud moments. But the most proud and the most proud moment is right now. Thank Ooh. you from me and on behalf of those that need the strength and inspiration. <laughs> I just feel so lucky you know, to have him that will see me and love me for who I am and who I will always be. I think it's easy to put people in boxes, but people grow and evolve and change. And, um, you know, to have someone that will stand by your side through all of that is a gift. And, um, you know, he's, he's that pillar. <laughs> I can hear it in his, in his words. What are you hoping that this does to change the conversation within figure skating? I hope that, you know, it gives everybody a little hope <laughs> that there's someone like them, that they're not alone, that, you know, it's okay to be different. And usually the thing that makes us most different is our greatest gift. Um, I think it's really important for figure skating to take a look around, especially its elite athletes and see who we're missing, um, visible and invisible minorities. Um, you know, skating has has always been a pretty white heterosexual elite sport, and I don't think that's the best route for <laughs> any sport. Um, and I think it's important for us to take a critical look at at um, at ourselves and say, why don't why don't we have any queer women here? you know, um, because we're here. <laughs> and I just, uh, I want to start the conversation and, and um, you know, I want skating to be inclusive and diverse and I want everybody to experience what we love so much about it. Um, and skating deserves that, you know? Yeah. But most yeah. importantly, I, I want people to not feel alone. I can promise that you're doing that with this announcement. When you think to the future, what inspires you? You know, what makes you think we can get there, especially in figure skating? Um, to know that I'm not the first and I won't be the last, you know, um, that the conversations that we're having um, regarding race, regarding gender, regarding sexual orientation, you know, these are all the right ones to be having. Um, I, I think that we just need to keep taking baby steps forward. 
and um, Canada in particular is, is a leader in that. And I think that we can continue being that for the rest of the figure skating world. So what's next? Ooh, open ice too. Visionaries preparing July 3rd. <laughs> Very smooth. <laughs> uh, what's next for me? Uh, you know, I, I wanted to do this for my sport, but I needed to do this for myself. So I, I just, you know, I, I feel like what's next for me is to just sit back and, and kind of let it all soak in <laughs> that I've made it this far. Um, and, uh, you know, in my spare time, I'm working on the Open Ice Collective. It's my charity initiative to help skating become more inclusive. And, um, and we're doing that in a lot of different ways. And so I have a new project coming up in July, which is very exciting. Um, but it's, it's really a special feeling to feel like I'm merging now all of who I am into one. Caitlin, it means the world to me that you have trusted me with this and uh, that you connected. And I would like to just give you the microphone. Is there anything that I've missed or overlooked? Um, I think I would be remiss without saying that um, being here today and having this conversation with you um, is a privilege. And um, we're here doing this because of generations of LGBTQ, in particular, um, trans women of color that have fought for the right for us to even have this conversation safely. Um, and if, if I could say one thing to those in my sport and out of it that are considering this um, or feeling different, it's that don't come out until you're, you feel safe um, emotionally and physically. And when you do, we're here and we're fighting for you. And um, and that there's always going to be someone waiting on the other side with open arms.